Hi, I'm Brian Dean from Amulet Studios, and earlier this week some new videos dropped from Sora, and I was going to make a video about it, but I'm glad I waited because today something which I think is a lot more interesting came out, and we're going to take a look at that right now. So in case you missed it, early this week, OpenAI released some new videos from Sora, which they posted on their website. Since we introduced Sora to the world last month, we've been working with visual artists, designers, creative directors, and filmmakers to learn how Sora might aid in their creative process. So these new videos that came out were made by these visual artists, designers, creative directors, and filmmakers. So this is not just stuff that was made by the people at OpenAI, this was made by actual artists. So we see here a few quotes from these, uh, from the people that used it. Sora is at its most powerful when you're not replicating the old, but bringing to life new and impossible ideas we would have otherwise never had the opportunity to see. As great as Sora is at generating things that appear real, what excites us is its ability to make things that are totally surreal. And there's some examples here. You can go to their website and you can check out all these videos. They're all really, really super cool. I'll play through just a few clips here to give you a preview of what was put out. There were seven videos in total. They're all really cool and they're all very different and, uh, and they're all really worth just going and checking out. There's just like some abstract visuals. There are flying pigs. There are all kinds of things. There's really a lot of cool stuff here. It was really, this is really, really impressive. It's really just an amazing showcase of what Sora is able to do. Now that was really cool and all the videos that were posted earlier this week were really cool. But what I found really interesting was the video that I saw earlier today. And that was a video put out by the people over at Shy Kids talking about how they used Sora and the process they used to make their short film, Airhead. Shy Kids is based in Toronto. It's a multimedia production company that utilized Sora for their short film about a balloon man. We now have the ability to expand on stories we once thought impossible shares the trio made up of Walter Woodman, Sidney Leader, and Patrick Cedarberg. Speaking to the wider industry, people from all over the world with stories ready to burst out of their chests finally have the opportunity to show the world what's inside. Now, let's just watch the video that they posted today. My name's Walter. I'm a director at Shy Kids. I'm Sydney. I'm a producer at Shy Kids. My name's Patrick. I'm one of the directors here at Shy Kids, and I help put together our first experiment with Sora called Airhead. If you haven't heard, Sora is a brand new text-to-video AI tool. And it made us feel like our head was just expanding with ideas. So we wrote a quick script about this man with a balloon for his head. How do you maintain a character and look consistent, even though Sora is very much a slot machine as to what you get back? And it's not as easy as just a magic trick, type something in, get exactly what you were hoping for. What ultimately you end up seeing took work, time, and human hands to get it looking semi-consistent. Be that through the curation, the script writing, the editing, the voiceover, the music, sound design, color correction, all the typical post-production stuff. We've always embraced new technologies. Using Sora definitely opens up a lot more possibilities, especially with indie film crews working on low-budget projects, which oftentimes I am. Given the opportunity to experiment with it, my personal goal was to highlight the optimism that can be found in it. Even with a technology that some might deem as cold and impersonal, you can still bring your human intuition with storytelling into it and create something that works. No, I think Airhead is figuring out life and feels a little bit different from everybody else, but ultimately learns to embrace those differences. And I think that filmmaking is all about perspective. It's all about who's coming from a unique place. Where does he go next? That's a great question. What I found really interesting was this behind the scenes look, and I'm really grateful that the people over there at Shy Kids were able to share their process with us so that we could see how this might affect filmmaking in the real world and what the future with these tools might look like. So it sounds like uh, the videos that they used didn't come straight out of the box. They didn't come straight from Sora and then just go straight into the film. It wasn't like they just typed in a prompt and out came 
this video. There was still a lot of manual labor. There was still a lot of work that went in. They still had to adjust the clips. They still had to make sure that it fit the objective and the vision of the film that they were going for. And that's kind of a, a very important point to make. Right now with all the AI tools that I've been using, one of the things that you really don't have right now is that that level of control that you really do need. Um, in the VFX and animation world and, and feature films, you everything uh, about making a film is geared towards having complete total control over everything that's on screen, uh, especially VFX and animation. Um, there's very elaborate pipelines, uh, really powerful software. All of it is geared towards giving you absolute complete total control over everything that's on screen down to the pixel. And that's because when when you're making feature films, when you're when you're trying to create something, you have an artistic vision and you're making decisions. Everything is done with intent. And so with this video, they had a vision, they had intent. Uh, the videos that came out of Sora may not necessarily have been what they wanted, and they just fixed them and made sure that they um, fit the vision and they fit the story. And like I said, that's very important. Um, making sure that everything is done with intent is something that the AIs uh, and all these tools right now cannot do. Another thing that we don't really know is we don't really know how much time it takes to render these videos. We don't know if it takes 10 minutes, if it takes 30 minutes, 60 minutes, an hour, a day. We don't really know. We also don't know how much it costs. I think it's pretty safe to say that this won't be free, but what exactly the cost is, well, we don't really know. So while there's a lot of things that we don't know yet about uh, how SOAR is gonna work, and we don't really know a lot of the details about how the images are made and how long it takes and how much it costs, I think one thing is clear. This is a very, very exciting technology, and there is an awful lot of potential here. What this tool is gonna do is it's gonna open the doors to independent filmmakers and people that don't have the resources of the big studios, people that don't have big budgets, they don't have armies of artists, something that empowers people to do something that was once beyond their, beyond their reach, I think that's really exciting. And that's why I think this technology is, is just really exciting. So anyway, that's just what I think about all this. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And if you like this video, then please hit that like button. And then better yet, it would be great if you would subscribe to the channel and then hit the notification bell so that you won't miss any future videos. So if you like this video we made, smash the like button, don't be afraid. Subscribe to the channel too We really appreciate all of the views